you're only a day away from Friday. You're watching CNN Student News. You're 10 minutes away from getting up to speed on current events. We're starting in China today. Big meeting there. It's the once a year gathering of the National People's Congress. It includes thousands of delegates from all over the country. China is a communist state. The government controls the economy and other parts of society. So the National People's Congress is limited. It won't be voting on any major laws. But this meeting is a chance for China to talk about its economic plans. And because it's the world's second largest economy, international economists are watching to see what China will do. Other parts of the international community are watching Ukraine. A lot of talking about the crisis there yesterday. Meetings involving officials from the European Union, Ukraine, Russia, the U.S. But there wasn't a lot of action. Some U.S. officials are still considering economic sanctions against Russia for its involvement in Ukraine. Russia is threatening economic action of its own that could hurt trade in other parts of Europe. You didn't see it, you didn't feel it, you might not have known it was there, but an asteroid zipped by us yesterday. Well, that's relative. It was close by space standards. It wasn't in terms of miles. But since there's a 1 in 10,000 chance of this same asteroid coming back near us on March 4th, 2046, Chad Myers is going to help us get to know it. Chad. Yeah, Carl, an asteroid yesterday flew between the Earth and the Moon, or at least the orbit of the Moon. It's about a quarter of a million miles between the Earth to the Moon, and this was slightly inside of it, 90% all the way from here to here, or 10% from here to here. So it was still about 217,000 miles away as it flew on by the Earth. Now let's think about the size of this, because here's a baseball diamond right here. Here's actually the Turner Field. If you take a ball of a big rock and you put it right over the infield, that's how big this asteroid was, right over the infield of any baseball diamond. Now you take that, you fly that in between the Earth and the Moon, and you have something going for you. Now this is not one of the closer ones probably we'll have this year, but it certainly is 90% of the way between the Earth and the Moon, and it's called DX-110. 110 because it's actually the 110th asteroid that they have found so far this year. Think about this, though. Last year, 21 asteroids flew closer to the Earth than this one, and the chance of this actually hitting the Earth was only one in about 10 million. Now, it was probably more of a big deal to the asteroid that the Earth got so close. Because if you're standing on the asteroid and all of a sudden the Earth flies on by, you're thinking to yourself, wow, that was the size of an Earth, not the size of a baseball field. It had a lot more danger to the asteroid right there than to the Earth as it flew on by. Carl. Big changes are coming to the SAT exam. Fewer students have been taking it. And the College Board, the group that administers the test, says it wants the SAT to be more connected to what's being taught in high school. Changes take effect in two years. The top score you can get, currently 2,400, it's going back to 1,600. Vocabulary words will be easier. Essays will no longer be mandatory. And you won't need to know as much about as many subjects. Critics say it'll dumb down the test. It'll be more closely aligned with Common Core curriculum, which supporters applaud for setting national education standards, but critics say hurts students and goes against states' rights to set their own standards. Time for the shout out. The word orum is Latin for what element on the periodic table? If you think you know it, shout it out. Is it silver, aluminum, tungsten, or gold? You've got three seconds. Go. With atomic symbol AU and atomic number 79, gold comes from the Latin term aurum. That's your answer, and that's your shout out. Yesterday, gold was trading on the stock market at over $1,300 an ounce. It doesn't tarnish or corrode. It's been used in jewelry for thousands of years. It's mentioned in the Bible, the Torah, the Koran. And it's been the one universally acceptable form of currency. People have hunted gold in mountains and seas, but recently it just turned up in someone's backyard. It may be the greatest buried treasure ever found in the United States. Coin after coin, more than 1,400, all of them pure gold, found by some lucky couple on their California property. Estimated worth $10 million. How did they find these coins? They were out walking their dog on their property like they'd done for years, and they spied something in the metal, and, and, and they went to investigate. They thought it was full of paint. The couple wants to remain anonymous, but that hasn't stopped some people from trying to figure out who they are and how the riches wound up on their property. 
The latest theory is that it's part of an early 20th century heist at the San Francisco Mint. This newspaper article from 1901 makes reference to the sum of $30,000 in gold coin stolen from the vault of the cashier. The face value of the buried treasure was nearly the same amount. The thief, a man named Walter Dimmick, was eventually busted, but the gold was never found. Could this be the long lost loot? And if it is, could it also spell bad news for those who found it? Yes, according to legal experts. In a case where you can clearly identify the owner and clearly identify the crime, uh, the finder's right to the treasure certainly diminishes. But don't start feeling sorry for them. Apparently in this case, it really is finder's keepers. The Mint says it doesn't have any information linking the coins to any thefts at any U.S. Mint facility. Perhaps the most likely scenario? It was just a guy hiding his money. Back then, they didn't always trust the banks, you know. The lucky couple is trusting these men to be their coin dealers. Filthy and covered with 120 years of dirt, they brought them back to their original luster. You think your odds are better of winning the lottery or finding gold buried in your yard? Winning the lottery, no doubt about it. The treasure unearthed, but the secret behind it remains buried. Dan Simon, CNN, San Francisco. Sail into port and batten the hatches because there's a storm brewing in today's roll call. We're taking you to Chandler, Arizona, where the forecast at Santan Junior High School is for the storm with a chance of awesome. Next, we're moving north to Mount Pleasant, Utah. That's where the Hawks are perched, watching from North San Pete High School. And we'll wrap up today's roll in Iowa, saluting the Trojans of West Marshall Middle School. Glad to be part of your day in State Center. When good things happen to good folks. 12-year-old Louis Corbett is a giant Boston Celtics fan. He's never seen a game in person. Louis lives in Auckland, the largest city in New Zealand. Because he has a rare eye disease called retinitis pigmentosa, his parents and his favorite team are helping him see all he can while he can. Good boy. At 7 a.m. from 9,000 miles away, Louis Corbett shakes out the sleep, wearing a Celtics t-shirt and a permanent smile. He gets a kiss from mom and he's ready to Skype on his favorite topic. Um, well, Larry Bush. Louis, like two of his brothers, has a rare genetic eye disease that leaves most patients blind by age 40. That's going that way quickly. In fact, Louis doesn't expect to have his sight for much longer. I just think of it as just my eyes just slowly going down, but I don't really think about it that much. His parents do, and they want Louis to build a library of images in his brain memories in his mind's eye. And when they ask him what he wants to see most... I want to see basketball in America. Good, thanks. <laughs> the kid is always wearing Celtics green, even when he got to meet a professional New Zealand hoops team. Neighbors started raising money for a trip to Boston, and it spread on social media. That's when the Celtics owners, the Grosbecks, whose son is blind, saw it. And they were all over it. Corinne Grosbeck tweeting, Our son has a similar disease that affected him at birth. I'm on it. Boston Celtics got hold of us and said, hey, if you're coming over, love to see you. What can we do? The team's bringing Louis to Boston next week. He'll watch his favorite team live from a luxury box. I'm hoping the Celtics will win, but because, <laughs> yeah, first in the year game will be great to see a win, but, <laughs> and yeah, I just want to meet the players as well. That would be cool. Now that is a banner night. There are a number of traditions associated with Lent and the Carnival and Mardi Gras season. This is one you probably don't know about. It's the Washington National Cathedral Pancake Race. Competitors try to flip flat jacks three times before the finish. Legend has it that back in 1445, a British woman was making pancakes when she heard the church bells ring. She didn't want to be late for the service, so she took her frying pan with her. That run is no piece of pancake. It's no cakewalk. You know they say, no pan, no gain. And when push comes to shrove, the race will put your skillet to the test. Do what you can to avoid a flapjack, and we'll see you Friday with CNN Student News Returns.